Now, I wanted to ask, when y'all recorded Groovy, uh, yeah, Groovy Grubworm, the situation, y'all was hanging around down at the store and y'all was trying to come up with something to put on the flip side of another record? Yeah, that... I was trying to find something to put on the flip side of Sad and Lonely. And uh, we just, you know, good Lord gave us that. It's probably after 12 o'clock at night or close to it. And we we got it done. And uh, uh, I went out to across the street restaurant out there on Boyd Street. And I was sitting out there, and I come up with that little drawing of that grub worm. Yeah. Uh, and then we hand cuddled his Harlow and his wife, my mom and dad, myself, hand cuddled 2,500 copies. <laughs> and we took to all these, uh, I took most of them radio stations and stuff. And anyway, that's <laughs> just something different. That's what I like about it. That's really what I'm uh, wanting to record is the, the people. It's not necessarily so much the process, but the people involved that was around. Uh, like, say, for the Groovy Grubworm song, I know Tom Rivers played bass on it. Uh, my brother John was on it, and Harlow and yourself, of course. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised at the stories you hear later on, revisionist stories about it. <laughs> yeah, people saying they played and this and that stuff. Yeah. But that's what it's done, and then... My mom and me took off and went to mostly over Oklahoma and part of Missouri and part of Kansas, up to Kansas City and Lord, down to uh, Clovis, New Mexico and Portales, New Mexico and back down through Texas and back down to Shreveport and over to Little Rock and the Hot Springs going to all these radio stations and, and uh, uh, boy, if we didn't go to the radio stations we stopped at some of the towns and mother would take two records and go to the ladies' restroom and go in there and little, little, leave a little note and say, if you like a record, please request it at your favorite station. You know, <laughs> yeah. we probably gave away six or eight hundred records, but we probably, you know, probably gave away another six or eight hundred radio stations and then probably, and then. Because I had to reorder the thing two or three times. So, well, you know, somebody out there has got about ten copies because I saw them advertised for sale. And it might have been Motorcycle Maniac, I forget now. I was just well, was it on the Impel or was it on the Plantation? I don't know. They just said There's they had a lot it. of it on Plantation. That's what we leased it to. Yeah, I remember but, when y'all released it on Plantation. But, and when he first came out on Plantation, they had a copy of this little grub worm that I drew. But he didn't can color it or nothing. He just put it out, I guess, green, black, or whatever. I used to have one of them somewhere. And then they made some balloons or something out in California or something. Somebody said, well, oh, they saw that all over there. But, you know, that's, I never did get to see any of it. But. Well, I see lots of comments about the song. Uh, kids talking about, well, their dad learned to play guitar by that song and things huh. of that nature. That's That's why... I see the importance of just talking about people involved and what's going on around behind it. something that lives on long after we're gone from here. I also wanted, before I come in, I stopped out at the cemetery and took a picture of Paul's grave. I was there, so were you, when we buried Paul. Yeah. But it made me think about all the guys that used to hang around the studio back then. Yeah. I mean, besides my brother and I, uh, there was Paul, Melvin, uh, that steel guitar player you mentioned a while ago. Johnny Vaughn. Yeah, Johnny Vaughn. Yeah, and... Uh, and wasn't there a fiddle player named O'Neill? Yeah, Russell, Russell O'Neill. And uh, Jerry Horner played steel. He came down and played a few things with us. And, and I think Doug Campbell came down and played a couple of things. Lou Houston played a couple of things with us and when he wasn't playing with Conway and stuff. And, uh, See some of the other guys. I remember Bill Wimpy Wells and uh, uh, boy, I don't know. They, like I say, there was so many of them. There was a lot of people. And, uh, I remember Bill Hetherington was there. He's a judge. Well, he played with the rock and roll group at the Lane and the Beldettas and the Outcasts and the Orphans and the Disciples and the Discounts and probably some more besides that. Who was Melvin working with before you guys got together and played? He was in the Navy, and, and that's the first time I'd met him. Was, 
Yeah, I, I probably was, I might have been 19 years old or something like that, but I, they played out the officer's club out the, you know, out the Navy base, South Base, and uh, had some piano player that went to OU was running track. He's from uh, uh, Africa, and he went, after he graduated, he went back home, but he was a real good piano player. And then Bob Rains played guitar, and then Melvin played guitar and sang, and then uh, I don't remember who was playing bass. I, but anyway, I well I just played out there with him for a little while, and then I played Star Land with we well, was playing in high school. I was playing with Ronnie Martin and, and Kent Price and myself, and you know, was as Ronnie Martin the Blue Notes and played for WKY Teen Hops and and. Drive all over the country, get your name on radio for ten dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think when you was working with Harlow, and y'all was coming back through Arkansas one time. Didn't he get the back back glass of his Cadillac shot out or something? Uh, well, me, he might have though. Well, I heard him talking about it. I didn't know if you were uh, involved or knew anything I, about that or with, not. Uh, I played with Harlow for I guess no. Oh, about two and a half years, or close to it, and then, and then I quit and started up in the city, and Steve Swim uh, started playing drums with him. Yeah, he's another guy that hung around, the, and I've worked with Steve myself. Yeah, and then after Steve uh, and Richard Sharp and Harlow, uh, after Shelby would never pay us that much and stuff, and then he changed the name of his band to Harlow Wilcox and Brownwood, and so then after. After then Harlow quit and stuff, then Brownwood just kept together uh, without Harlow. And then, I don't know, it's just 